So on the next part of our project right here, we're gonna have to drill a hole into the bottom of the tulip so that our wooden dowel or our stem can go into it later on. We're gonna use a 3 8 inch dowel and we're gonna drill it at a 3 8 inch hole. And the reason why we have not yet cut any of this out is for this step. When we do this step, we're going to use what's called a dowelet centering jig. And this particular dowelet right here will sit right onto the top like this. And this will help align our drill bit so that we drill nice and straight. There's several different sizes in here. There's 3 16 3 8 5 16 7 16 and 1 half of an inch. Since we're using our 3 8 we'll be in this hole right here. And in order to use this, we need to figure out exactly where we're going to put it on our project. So when we centered our project, we set our bottom flush like this, and then we just kind of move this from side to side. So we're going to measure from here to here. See what that is. And our particular project here happens to measure four and five eighths. So I'm going to write that measurement down. And I want to find the center or halfway point of four and five eighths of an inch. So here's how I do it. What's half of four? Two. Two. Does anybody know what half of five eighths is? It's kind of tricky, right? But it's really not. So to find to find the halfway point of a fraction, to find half of it, all we do is double the denominator. Now, which number in the fraction is the denominator? the top number or the bottom number? Bottom. It's the bottom. All right, so we need to double the denominator. Am I doing anything with the top? No. So, Luke, what is half of 5 eighths? 5 sixteenths is correct. So our center of 4 and 5 eighths is 2 and 5 sixteenths. So, Caden, if he said that half of 5 eighths was 5 sixteenths because all he knew he had to do was double the denominator, what would half of 5 sixteenths be? 5 30 seconds. Does anybody know what half of 5 30 seconds would be? 5 60 fourths. Then 5 1 28 5 2 56. Obviously, we don't really measure that accurate in here, but I'm showing you guys how to find the center of a fraction. All you have to do is double the denominator. That's it. Just double the denominator. So I'm gonna take my ruler right here, and I see that on this side over here, this one measures an eighth scale. Would I be able to find the sixteenths on the eighth scale? Nah. So I have to flip my ruler around, and I have to take my ruler, put it on the edge over here, find the number two, and then I'm gonna count five lines past that. One, two, three, four, five sixteenths. I'm then going to take my square, I'm going to put it on here, and I'm going to draw a square line lightly up, not heavy, lightly. And we want to confirm that it's really close to the center of our top piece. Am I really close? Yeah. I just want to make sure that it's not over here or over here. So that's a nice centered piece. What do you think I'm going to do right here? What have we been doing to those lines? Oh, squared across, absolutely. So I'm gonna bring it over here, draw a nice square line, just like so. We're now ready to go ahead and put our dowelet centering jig on. So I see my 3 8 right here, and I'm gonna take a look. And do you see on my 3 8 do you see that, that line right there? So there's a line that is scribed into the bottom of our base right here and that's going to be for our center so I would take this here I would put that right on my line I'm going to lightly snug this up I would then take my camera and make sure that the center of this hole is lined up or the flashlight on my on my camera phone and I can see from here it is I'm obviously using my phone to record this so now we are ready to go ahead and, and drill this. This not only is going to help us drill it straight this way, 
all right? But it's also going to help us drill straight this way. And it's also centering it on our board. So we're gonna grab some power. We're gonna bring our power down. Now if we listen, hear how it's clicking? When it clicks, it'll hold. Is it clicking anymore? What's it gonna do? It goes back up. So when I pull this down, I wanna pull it down to where it clicks. I'm gonna pull a little bit extra. When we go to use our drill, we need to make sure that the drill will be spinning in the clockwise direction or to the right. If it's not, the selector down here will fix that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plug this in. I'm gonna see which direction it's spinning. Is that spinning clockwise? No, oh, I'm spinning the wrong way. So I'd come down here and I'd flip my switch over. Am I now spinning clockwise? Absolutely. When I drill this, need to make sure I have my safety glasses on. I like to put the drill right on top like this. Do you see, do you see my thumb right here? You see that? Does it look like my thumb fits perfectly right there? Does it look like there's a spot made for it? Absolutely. So what I do is I hold my, my thumb up here and I don't need to press hard. This hand over here, the trigger, the trigger hand, is not gonna do any pressure because if I do, I'm gonna be pushing pressure down and, and trying to cock this thing sideways like this. This is my pressure hand, this just turns it on and off. This particular drill is a variable speed. The more I squeeze the trigger, the faster it goes. If we take a look at this particular drill right here, it does say variable speed, and it should tell us how fast this one goes. This one goes from zero to 800 RPMs, so this is a rather slow turning drill. All right, a lot of them will go from zero to 750, zero to 800, all right? And there's some that will go from zero to like 2750 or, or 3000. We don't really need to be spinning that type of speed for these here, so we're gonna be in great shape. 800's a little bit slow for wood, but for what we're doing right here, we're gonna be in great shape. We're going to put this here, confirm us spinning to the right, place it in here. Do you see the tape that I have? I wanted to go one inch in. So I put a piece of tape right here so that it tells me when to stop. Do you think I could probably push through the tape though? Is it more of a visual? Yeah, it's a little bit physical, but it's a lot visual. I like to stand right over top of it. Down a little bit, pull it up a little bit. I'm at my tape, I bring it out. Now if we take a look, the flutes of the drill bit right here help expel the chips out. So that's why you see them come out as we go. But oftentimes it's not going to get it all out. It's going to get plugged. So that's why I withdrawed it. And did you see the chips kind of fall out like that? And then I was able to go back down in and, come, and then it came back up. It's not going to keep cutting if it's plugged up. All right, because you can't take anything else out. So that's why you have to pull it out, let the chips come out and then go back through and we stopped right at our tape right there. This looks good, I'm gonna take this to the left, I'm gonna bring it out, take my project out of my vise, right on our center. This will be handy later when we put our dowel in. Is that a pretty easy step? Did we take our time? Did we execute it good? Outstanding. 